Hi, my name is Jennifer Council, and I'll be talking to you about Brucella abortus, um, or brucellosis, as it's commonly called in veterinary medicine. Brucellosis is a disease that is caused by a bacteria called Brucella abortus, which is a non-spore-forming gram-negative bacteria. Uh, it affects many species, horses and cattle, uh, being kind of the top one. It also affects sheep, goats, pig, buffalo, bison, uh, even dogs, and yes, humans. Uh, it causes many diseases in these guys. We're gonna talk about cattle and horses today, um, about what happens to them if they get infected. Um, when it comes to horses, this is Sparky here, uh, they get something called supraspinatus bursitis, and also something else that's commonly called uh, pole evil. Uh, the supraspinatus bursitis is actually inflammation of a bursa sac. A uh, bursa sac is basically a fluid-filled cushion that resides between bone and soft tissues such as skin, uh, tendons, ligaments, and even muscle. A uh, common place for this to happen is to have a fistula right here on the withers, which is this part down here at the bottom of the neck. Uh, on a real horse, it'll be kind of a bump for those people who aren't really familiar with horses. Um, and what'll happen is it'll get swollen and sometimes it will rupture. Pole evil occurs right here at the top of the head. This is called the pole on horses. Again, it'll be like a fistula, it'll swell up and sometimes it will rupture and it'll have all kinds of nasty um, infected fluid coming from it. This is what it looks like. This is the supraspinatus uh, bursitis on the withers. And this is what pole evil looks like. This is the horse's face. This is the top of the head. And you can see that this is one that has ruptured, and that's the kind of exudate that it has from it. Um, it's really gross. You want to make sure you wear gloves if you're dealing with that. <clears throat> In cattle, a couple of things that will happen is they can get something called a hygroma, which again is another fluid filled sac. Typically, it happens on the front legs, right at the knee area, okay, or maybe even at the hock. Usually, it's on the front legs, so at the knee. And this is what it looks like. This is actually a water buffalo uh, with brucellosis in Africa, which is a place where it still resides, uh, common in wildlife there. And that is a huge hygroma there. It's just a big fluid-filled sac. Uh, to remove this completely, uh, it would have to have surgery and they would have to take the whole, whole sac off. This is the picture of what happens in the front legs in cattle. You can see here, you can see the swelling here as well. Uh, this one's pretty severe. <clears throat> Another thing that happens uh, in bulls is that they will get something called orchitis, which is a swelling of the testicles. Um, also, they'll get inflammation of the epididymis, which is a part of the testicle. And this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, you can see this is the scrotum area here. This is what a normal testicle would look like. And this is what one what would be inflamed would look like. You can see the irritation here, and it's swollen. It's a little bit larger than this one. And this is what it looks like on an actual uh, set of bull testicles. Uh, this is a normal one. And then you can see the swelling right here in the epididymis. Uh, it's probably pretty painful. You may not notice this in a bull uh, unless you are measuring him. But uh, it would probably be a pretty significant swelling. It would probably be pretty painful. <clears throat> Something else that happens in cattle and in horses is abortion. And a lot of times this is a late term abortion. So the fetus is pretty well developed before the, the mare or the cow will abort um, the foal or the calf. If the calf is born, they will typically be very weak. They may have a lower birth rate or uh, weight. Um, <clears throat> the mom may, the, the cow, she may have a decreased milk production, or even a retained placenta. That's not uncommon either. Uh, they have something called an abortion storm, where if you don't know that your cattle have brucellosis, you may have a whole, a whole group of, of cows that have abortions. Uh, they may be back to back. So that would be very indicative of brucellosis, and you should be 
talking to your veterinarian about having those tested. Uh, testing usually includes sending off a sample to the lab to be analyzed uh, by the lab technicians there, and they'll let you know any any positives for brucellosis need to be sent to the state veterinarian. They need to be reported as a reportable disease. It can be prevented. Uh, there is a vaccination that is given to heifers uh, between four and 12 months of age. It's given sub-Q. Um, right here in the shoulder. Right there. We don't give vaccines back here. Or throughout the body, we give them up here in the shoulder um, or in the lower neck area. So cute, it causes less problems there and it affects the meat less. So they get those vaccines. It is not mandatory to have testing done anymore in states, but it is still recommended. Uh, proper herd management is really super important to to make sure that we don't have brucellosis come back in the area. In 2008, it was designated, it was declared that all 50 states were brucellosis free. <laughs> Since we are brucellosis free in the 50 states, but we are not brucellosis free in other countries. So there is still a possibility of it returning here. So at least intermediate testing is very, very important. Anytime you bring a new cow or a new bull, a new heifer to your herd, you should probably have them tested just to make sure any young heifers need to be vaccinated. And any suspicious behavior, um, low milking, which you may see in dairy cattle, uh, any, any abortions that are unexplained uh, need to be tested. <clears throat> The people that are most going to be at risk are, of course, veterinarians, uh, farmers and ranchers who are handling the animals day in and day out, and the lab technicians that are dealing with the specimens that are being set in are definitely uh, in, in the crossfire for being uh, contaminated with this disease. It is very zoonotic. You get it by being exposed to infected tissues such as uterine tissue, uh, placentas, the milk that has been produced in any aborted fetuses, if you're handling those, uh, to be very, very cautious. It is very important to wear the proper protective equipment. And here is Faith to demonstrate this for us. So here's just an example of the proper protection equipment. She has her bouffant cap on to protect her head. She has a surgical mask on her face to protect from getting any of that stuff in her mouth or mucous membranes because that's how it's absorbed. She does have gloves on and an absorbable, I mean, a, <laughs> a disposable apron to protect her clothing. Uh, again, all this stuff is disposable. If you suspect that it is a zoonotic pathogen, it needs to be placed into a biohazard bag and disposed of properly so that nobody gets infected with brucellosis, because that would be bad. Um, people who are at risk, again, we talked about veterinarians and the staff there that work are, are very high at risk. Any ranchers who are pulling their own calves are, are at high risk as well. Um, if you are somebody who palpates your own cattle or delivers your own calves, it is very good idea to have these on hand. These are obstetric sleeves. They're obese sleeves. They go all the way up to your shoulder, and they just kind of protect you from getting any of the, the uterine tissues on you, any of the placenta or uh, any of the genetic material, any of the biomaterial that, that could be happening going on there. Um, in in people, people who contract brucellosis, typically will have an undulate fever. Undulate just means that the fever will kind of go up and down, uh, kind of like in a wave motion. They'll have a high fever and then a low fever. They'll get chills. They'll have lethargy. They'll be really tired. Um, you may have achy joints and achy pains, <laughs> similar to the flu. Uh, but if you've been exposed, you know, you need to go see the doctor right away and make sure that you haven't been infected with brucellosis because it could be severe. Prevention, again, is, is the best uh, way to keep everybody safe, to keep our humans safe and our pets and our livestock uh, consuming. People are also 
contaminated by consuming raw milk, which is kind of a new fad here. Uh, this is an example of raw milk. It is non-pasteurized, so it could still have the bacteria in there. It has not gone through the heating process to get rid of these bacteria. So it's really, really important that you be careful uh, if you were drinking or consuming raw milk or raw dairy that you be very aware of where it's coming from and the sources and the animals that it's, uh, that you're getting it from. Okay. And that's our talk on brucellosis. Uh, please visit our PowerPoint as well uh, to get more information on brucellosis.